Hello everyone, how's it going? Uh, today, uh, my presentation is about these awesome mnemonic word cavities, which are presenting a lot of differential diagnosis for lung pathology. Like, I can use it for differential diagnosis of solitary pulmonary nodules, differential diagnosis of multiple pulmonary nodules, and differential diagnosis of cavitary lung lesions, as we'll see in uh, next slides in our presentation. First of all, if I presented by pulmonary nodule or nodules, I subdivided them into solitary or multiple. If solitary, I should discriminate benign from malignant pulmonary nodules, as we'll see in the next presentation. Uh, in previous presentations, I talk about the multiple pulmonary nodules, which have size less than 2 mm, and uh, should uh, subdivide them into calcified or non-calcified pulmonary nodules, and by these mnemonic words for each uh, subdivided type, we can reach for the list of differential diagnosis as shampoo for calcified from silicosis, hyperbara, histoplasmosis, alveolar microlysiasis, metastasis or mitral stenosis, or previous chicken box exposures for calcified pulmonary nodules, or test match specials for uh, Miller TB, Murray metastasis, sarcoidosis, or simple silicosis for non calcified pulmonary nodules less than 2 mm. Today, I will talk for the solitary pulmonary nodules, cavitating lung nodules, and the multiple pulmonary nodules more than 2 mm until 3 cm. And the mnemonic word cavities can uh, make the list of differential diagnosis for all of these uh, lung pathology. Uh, this picture uh, showing a lot of uh, lung pathology, of different pathology, uh, as that uh, frontal chest radiograph which is showing multiple uh, pulmonary nodules in the peripheral locations with actual calcifications in the progressive multifocal fibrosis in background of lung silicosis. Uh, this uh, representing solitary pulmonary nodules with benign type of calcifications for histoplasmosis. Another uh, example for solitary pulmonary nodules, which is showing a fatty component for hamartomas, and uh, this peripheral located the cavitating lung nodules multiple for septic emboli. Another multiple example for multiple pulmonary nodules with birilymphatic biribronchovascular distributions associated with lymphadenopathy for patient of sarcoidosis. Uh, this is an uh, example for case of multiple pulmonary nodules. Some of them are. Uh, uh, cavitating in patient male and smokers which has Langerhans cellulocytosis and this is an, another example for uh, cavitating lung nodules and other solitary pulmonary nodules here uh, for patient with Wigner's granulomatosis. So we have a lot of pathology here all of them can be uh, remembered the differential diagnosis by the that awesome word of cavities as we'll see in next slide. First, we make differential diagnosis of multiple pulmonary nodules, starting from more than 2 mm until 3 cm, because if the nodule is more than 3 cm, we consider it as a lung mass, not nodule. Uh, so, what is the differential diagnosis for this? We can remember it by these words, cavities, C, cancer, uh, whatever it's uh, primary or secondary, autoimmune, like Wigner's granulomatosis or rheumatoid arthritis, vascular, uh, septic emboli, arteriovenous malformations or infarctions, eye from infections or inflammations, like old granuloma or hamartoma, fungal or previous exposure to pneumonia, check and box pneumonia or lung abscess for acute status, uh, T from TB, and is sarcoidosis or silicosis uh, sequestrations also can consider a cause for solitary lung uh, nodules in the lower uh, uh, loops as a cause for congenital, which can be appeared in adult uh, films. Langerhans cellulocytosis can also consider for a differential diagnosis of multiple pulmonary nodules, even cavitating or not cavitating. So the mnemonic word cavities can uh, remember the causes or differential diagnosis for multiple pulmonary nodules. 
Fortunately, these words, the same words by the same differential diagnosis can be used for multiple cavitating lung nodules. And also can be used as a differential diagnosis for solitary pulmonary nodules, SPN, by the same causes. So if I remember the word cavities and which word is representing every letter representing which disease, I can remember now all the differential diagnosis of multiple pulmonary nodules, multiple cavitating lung lesions, and also solitary pulmonary nodules. Now, the word cavities, which representing disease uh, differential diagnosis, uh, can representing a differential diagnosis for multiple pulmonary nodules, solitary pulmonary nodules, or multiple cavitating lung nodules. Now, how can we select one from these differential diagnosis as the cause of uh, my presented case? Uh, first of all, I should classify the patient according to her or his clinical presentations. If the clinical presentation uh, is unwell, choose from the list cancer and TB and abscess for examples of infections uh, uh, from this list. It is presented well, so I can other list of differential diagnosis remaining a part from the differential diagnosis and enumerate ASM. Okay, let's start by the first frontal chest radiograph, which shows multiple pulmonary masses and nodules, as well as actual calcifications in the mediastinal and the hilar regions. These multiple pulmonary nodules put the case in the differential diagnosis of the multiple pulmonary nodules cavities, as we'll see in next slide. So now we have uh, a multiple pulmonary nodules, so we can uh, choose from the list of cavities. And second step is depend on the concomitant radiological, uh, clinical, and laboratory finding. Uh, for example, assuming these uh, nodules are distributed in mid and upper lung zone, uh, have actual calcifications in hilar and mediastinal lymph nodes, and have industrial or occupational history, uh, choosing the silicosis as a cause from the list and uh, associated with progressive multifocal fibrosis as our example. patient for silicosis and complicated by progressive multifocal fibrosis and shows multiple pulmonary nodules uh, uh, peripherally located and growing uh, towards the uh, hilar regions associated with actual calcifications on background of silicosis. So the diagnosis is progressive multifocal fibrosis for these multiple pulmonary nodules. Second, uh, case uh, uh, showing a frontal chest radiograph showing a multiple variable size uh, calcified and non calcified pulmonary nodules uh, associated with uh, lung mass here and uh, focal uh, mass or consolidation here also. Uh, so we presented with multiple pulmonary nodules. First step, the first step going to the uh, a pattern of pathology, multiple pulmonary nodules more than 2 millimeters until 3 centimeter. And uh, second, going to the mnemonic word, which remembers the differential diagnosis for this, which is cavities. There are a nine differential diagnosis for this. How can I choose one from these nines? Should uh, look for concomitant radiological finding on the film. Look, for, look at for the uh, laboratory finding or clinical presentation of the patient. Assuming this patient uh, presented with randomly distributed and varying size pulmonary nodules, evidence of bony abnormalities, uh, lytic or sclerotic bony lesions or absent limb, neck mass or surgery, mastectomy, clips in the thyroid region, in the axilla, or in the renal region, lymphangetic carcinomatosis on the film also, all these findings of malignancy. We'll uh, choose or select the cancer from the list and the cancers I know can be primary or secondary. 
this patient uh, patient to have uh, an aggressive bony lesions in the distal femurs as we see here uh, with a wide zone of transition soft tissue component uh, cortical destructions and so we uh, consider these pulmonary nodules are metastases from this osteosarcom third case today is the frontal chest radiograph showing multiple variable sized pulmonary nodules are distributed all over both lung fields and all zones of the lung CT, mediastinal, and lung window confirm the presence of these pulmonary nodules, which have variable size and distributed all over both lung fields. So now I'm presented with what is the radiological patterns I presented, presented by multiple pulmonary nodules more than 2 mm. So I go into the uh, list of differential diagnosis cavities. And the cavities uh, need uh, radiological concomitant findings and laboratory concomitant findings uh, as well as clinical to select one from these differential diagnoses. If assuming this uh, super added by consolidations or lymphadenopathy, uh, if there are upper loop cavitations, or if there are positive acid fast basally uh, for the sputum analysis test or tracheobronchial biopsy, now I can choose the TB from the list as a differential diagnosis due to this acid fast bacilli. And I know the TB primary form uh, more common with super added consolidations and the lymphadenopathy, however, reactive form uh, more common with uh, cavitation. For this uh, patient is presented with multiple pulmonary nodules without cavitations or consolidations. First, uh, the author uh, uh, diagnosed it as a pulmonary metastasis. However, after searching for primary, there are no primary uh, uh, detected, and the tracheobronchial biopsy revealed the caseating granulitis consistent with the TB. So this was a case for the uh, pulmonary TB presented with multiple pulmonary nodules like metastasis form, as we see. Quiz 4, uh, this chest uh, CT uh, with um, uh, lung window showing multiple pulmonary nodules are noted here and there. And uh, also in both lung fields, there are distributed in the peribronchovascular distribution. And there are also another small sized nodules and uh, cavitating uh, small sized nodules noted in the lung, as well as uh, higher uh, lymphadenopathy. We go into the list of the multiple pulmonary nodule. Multiple pulmonary nodule uh, uh, and radiological concomitant findings uh, if there are peribronchovascular, the perilymphatic distribution, bilateral hyalur and right paratracheal lymph nodes, uh, which is called the Gerland triad or one, two, three sign, uh, egg shell calcifications, we can select the sarcoidosis as a different multiple pulmonary nodule. So we select the sarcoidosis from the list. This was a case of sarcoidosis presented with multiple pulmonary nodules and other concomitant radiological findings in the film, which is peribronchovascular distributions and the higher lymphadenops. Quiz 5. Uh, this uh, lung window uh, chest uh, CT showing multiple pulmonary nodules are distributed in both lung fields, uh, which shows cavitations and the subpleural. Uh, locations is a corona reformat uh, uh, film showing uh, confirm presence of subpleural locations of these uh, cavitating pulmonary nodules and they also have a smooth uh, inside outline and multiple uh, nodules with cavitation and without cavitations are noted so the differential diagnosis we uh, this pattern is the cavitating lung we're going to the multiple cavitating lung nodules list of differential diagnosis. The list is uh, remembered by the ward cavities, and this is the, uh, the diagnosis or pathology of ward cavities. I can uh, select one according to the concomitant radiological findings, the laboratory test, or clinical presentation of the patient. For example, assuming this patient has tricuspid valve endocarditis, have history of intravenous drug abusers, pelvic thrombophlebitis, uh, infected venous catheter or pacemaker wire for long term, uh, arteriovenous shunt for hemodialysis, 
drug abuse producing septic thrombophlebitis like heroin addicts, peritone cellular abscess or osteomyelitis. If I presented with this clinical history, I recommended these cavitating pulmonary nodules as a uh, vascular cause, which was a septic emboli considered as a differential diagnosis. And this was a case for the septic emboli showing multiple cavitating pulmonary nodules distributed all over both lung fields in subbilural locations as we see in this axial and coronary format image. With six uh, chest uh, lung window uh, CT examinations showing multiple pulmonary nodules, one of them showing cavitations and the peripheral locations and the other one is solid as we see here. So going to the list of the cavitating lung nodules or for the multiple pulmonary nodules uh, both are uh, uh, recommended or uh, uh, remembered by the word of cavities as we see here we can choose according the clinical radiological and laboratory concomitant findings assuming this patient uh, presented with cough uh, hemoptysis Proteinuria and hematuria, which meaning renal problem, renal uh, causes, uh, C anchor or cytoplasmic anti neutrophilic cytoplasm antibodies are positive, uh, nasal septum bony or and cartilage destruction. We now can consider it as an autoimmune uh, autoimmune uh, uh, cause for these uh, cavitating lung nodules and the Wagner's granulomatosis are positive for C. anca and also can cause destructions of the nasal cavity with uh, renal uh, problem. And this was a case for the granulomatosis with polyangitis, which is a new name for the Wigner's granulomatosis and associated also with nasal uh, septum destruction, as we see here, with these uh, lung nodules and the cavitating nodules. So the diagnosis is granulomatosis with polyangitis. Next case is a 55-year-old uh, patient who is a smoker. Uh, the frontal chest radiograph uh, showing this uh, retrocardiac uh, will circumscribed mass lesion. The CT is recommended, which shows the mass in the posterior mediastinum and the retrocardiac and not separated from the lung tissue. In this smoker patient, it uh, considers a malignancy in the first presentation. However, we have presented with a solitary, a solitary pulmonary nodule. We go into our list. The our list is showing this differential diagnosis. Uh, depending on the radiological concomitant finding, we go into the systemic. If the patient, uh, this nodule, they have systemic arterial supply and venous drainage, uh, not communicating with the tracheobronchial tree, separated from the surrounding lung by its own pleura. Recurrent pulmonary infection not responding to medication. <coughs> I can, according to this history and these findings, I can consider sequestrations as a cause and can select it from the list. Actually, this patient <coughs> Uh, is uh, after thoracotomy uh, showing feeding artery for these nodules and after histology examinations confirm the extra lobar sequestrations for that pulmonary nodule. Next case is the lung window for the CT patient uh, done CT with uh, multiple pulmonary nodules presented with multiple pulmonary nodules of variable size. Some of these nodules attached to the fissural surface and the pleural surface and others showing cavitations like this nodule and this nodule. So I presented with multiple pulmonary nodules or multiple cavitating lung nodules. I go to the cavitating or multiple pulmonary nodules uh, for cavities. Uh, cavities, I can select one according to the radiological findings and the clinical presentation. Uh, this patient, if the patient assuming this patient is a smoker and male, and this cyst is arranged in bizarre shape and have cystis uh, cavities and nodules, we can 
and cellulocytosis as a differential diagnosis and we can select the Langerhans cellulocytosis from the list of the cavity. This was a patient of the Langerhans cellulocytosis presented with multiple pulmonary nodules. Some of them are cavitating in male smoker patient raise the possibility of diagnosis and this is confirmed as a Langerhans cellulocytosis. Next case is uh, presented with solitary pulmonary nodule, as we see here, uh, with the central calcification, which is called the bullseye. So, if we presented with solitary pulmonary nodule, what is the differential diagnosis of solitary pulmonary nodules? Cavities, cancers, autoimmune vascular infection, TB, sarcoidosis, silicosis, sequestration, or Langerhans cellulocytosis. We Going to the next step, concomitant radiological laboratory and the clinical findings. Assuming this patient have multiple pancreatic calcifications, hyalur and mediastinal lymphadenopathy, popcorn calcification of large mediastinal nodes, upper loop fibrosis like TB, and pancreatic splenic calcifications which are incidentally discovered in CT also. I can consider these nodules are uh, all the granuloma and go to, to these sections of infections and inflammation. And we consider it as a histoplasmoma if there are any endemic area uh, patient coming from it or uh, if there are uh, these findings which raise the possibility of histoplasmos. And this was a patient for histoplasmosis, shows pulse eye calcification in central benign pattern, and the patient uh, from Ohio River Valley, which has endemic area for histoplasmosis also, so confirm the diagnosis of histoplasmoma or, or the cranium. So let me summarize my presentation. My presentation today is about cavities. According to the uh, lung pathology I presented on the film, like solitary pulmonary nodules, multiple cavitating lung lesions, or multiple pulmonary nodules more than 2 millimeters, I can uh, put the name for the mnemonic word which uh, uh, representing the differential diagnosis for that pathology. Next step, compare it with other concomitant and radiological finding as well as laboratory finding which can help you to select one from the list of differential diagnosis i mean really don't underestimate the importance of these things of the mnemonic words as it's gonna help you to become more confident more fluent and more confident radiology communicator and this is our my reference thank you very much for your listening and have a nice time or nice day